In this video, we'll do an introduction to logic, statements, and connectives. So, the first thing I'll do is look at the following sentences. Which of the following of these sentences are statements? Number one says, the room is cold. Well, this one I'll say, yes, it's a statement, and that's because we can assign it a truth value. It doesn't matter if it might seem like an opinion. Somebody might say it's cold, and somebody might disagree that it's not cold. Uh, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter whether the sentence involves something you could uh, describe as, as opinion. It's as long as you can give it a truth value, then it'll, s it'll be a statement in logic. Number two says, study logic every day. Now, that could be good advice, but it's not something that we can say is true. It might be true that it is good advice, but the, the sentence, study logic every day, being a kind of command isn't something to which we can assign a truth value. So number two is not a statement. Okay, I've just gone and added another sentence in here because I want to get back to this point to make sure it's clear um, about opinions. So number three says, this video is a work of complete perfection. And this is something that obviously is uh, in the realm of opinion, but we'll call it a statement because it's something to which we can decide a truth value. Even if we disagreed, um, you, e each person could make a decision as to the truth value, uh, and that is all that's really required uh, to form a statement uh, for the purposes that we're going to analyze statements logically. It's whether it can have a truth value one way or the other. Uh, never both. It can't be both. It, it needs to be something that is um, either true or false, and something to which you can assign such a truth value. Right? In logic, a statement is a sentence to which we can assign a truth value. That is, we can assign it the value of true or false. So number three, it's a statement. It doesn't matter actually whether it's actually true or false. It's just that you could give it a truth value. And again here, number four, studying logic is important. Um, it doesn't matter if that's actually true or not. It's the fact that you can assign to it a truth value. You can decide to, uh, ad to assign it the value of true or assign it the value of false. So number four is a statement. Number five, it says two plus two equals five. And that, because we know the meaning of plus and equal, and we know the meanings of these symbols, uh, and under the normal assumption about what those symbols mean, we can all agree that that statement is false, but it's still a statement, and we can assign it the value false. So not only do we know that this is a statement, we know that this is a false statement. Three less than five so there's, because we know the meaning of this symbol, uh, we know that uh, this is a statement, and we can also agree that it is a true statement. So that brings us to the number seven here, the seventh sentence. It says, this sentence is false. And this one's kind of interesting, because if you imagine for a moment that you assign it the value true, it itself refers to itself and says that it's false. So if it were true, it would be false. And then if you imagine for a moment that it is false, then it would actually therefore be true because it says that it is false and that would simultaneously make it true. So this one we will say is not a statement. And the reason we say it's not a statement is because uh, it is simultaneously both true and false, creating a kind of paradox, which makes it a very interesting logical um, thing to analyze. But for the moment, we won't get into that uh, little dilemma. We'll just say such things that uh, uh, what we call statements must have one truth value. Um, now, it, it, it could change. Uh, you could say sometimes it's true and sometimes it's false, but it can't be simultaneously both, which is what's happening with number seven. So not a statement. Okay, and then number eight. Uh, the sentence here is, all dogs go to heaven. So this is something that we could give a truth value. Even if we don't know if it's actually true or false, we could just pick one. We could pick a truth value 
and assign it that truth value. And we might even disagree. It doesn't matter. It can be assigned a single truth value, which we could even decide later to be uh, different. But we can work with it in uh, logical analysis. Uh, once we decide whether it's true or false, we can make some other conclusions about things that relate to it. Uh, and so this, this last one is a statement. All right, let's move on to look at negations and quantifiers. And first, just focus on a negation. And the important point here is that the negation of any statement must have the opposite truth value of the given statement. So let's take some examples. Number one, the room is cold. The negation would be, the room is not cold. So the negation is, the room is not cold. Be careful that you wouldn't want to say something like, the room is hot. That clearly wouldn't be a negation because both statements could be false, right? It, may, it might be just right. So it's a, there's this idea of this sort of um, gradation here where you don't have a binary uh, hot or cold. You could, you could have something in between. Uh, and so to say um, the room is hot would, would not be a correct negation. And that's because both of the statements could be uh, false, logically speaking. Number two is a similar kind of uh, situation. If, if the given statement is the drink is too small, the correct negation would be the drink is not too small. Uh, you couldn't say the drink is too big. Um, logically, it's possible that it's something neither small nor too big. Um, and so um, correct negation is it is not too small. Next with number three, we have a statement that may be true or false depending on the actual value of x, but we can create a negation by forming something that would always have the opposite truth value, and that would be x is less than or equal to seven. It's important to include the equal in this case uh, because if you had, for example, x was actually seven, then this original statement, seven bigger than seven would be false, but then this one would be true. In that case that x is seven, uh, still they have opposite truth value. If you just put less than seven, if it was actually seven, both of these statements would be false. It wouldn't be correct. Uh, the correct negation is gonna, if you don't have the uh, little line underneath in the given statement, the negation will include it. If it was there in the original, in the negation, you wouldn't include it. All right, so that's some negation. Now let's move on to looking at quantifiers. Now when we study quantifiers, what I'm talking about are words like all, some, none, every, at least one, and there are other things like nothing, um, every, each. Uh, there are other words that might be logically interpreted to be equivalent logically speaking, to these. So there's, there's a lot of other possibilities, but these are the typical words that you um, see uh, that you can identify as quantifiers. Um, all right, and then one of the tricky things about working with quantifiers right away is, is the question of negating a quantifier. And so uh, whenever I explain it, I always draw a picture like this. I'll put all uh, in a circle, and then I'll, I'll link to its negation. So to negate all is to say some are not. And to negate none would be to say some are. Now, I can put other words like every and each. Um, those words are logically equivalent to saying all, but it's convenient to just pick one word that sort of represents them all. You know, then I'll use all. And, um, and, so, and, and then there's no particular reason why I had to put some or not here. It's just somehow this is always the picture I go to in, in my explanations. When I think it has perhaps the, the idea that these things cross uh, kind of has some hint to me of a, of a negation. So it is the negations of quantifiers that I am uh, representing in the diagram. So if you had some, you would negate that with none. It's easy to mix up. It takes a little while. Uh, and so you might need to work on just flat out memorizing these as if it was from rote. And I think over time you start to understand the logic of it and you won't really feel like memorizing. It'll just be logically what makes sense. Um, so let's do some examples. Uh, so in the first one, all dogs go to heaven is a statement. It may be true or it may be false. It doesn't really matter here. We can do some logical 
uh, at, you know, we can work with the logic of the statement in, in the following first uh, exercises to simply form a negation. So what is the negation of all dogs go to heaven? Well, the negation is some don't or some dogs do not go to heaven. You can write different things that are logically equivalent um, and and so that that's just part of what what happens. So so I would say negation is some dogs don't go to heaven. Number two says no one needs to study logic. And so a negation of that would be someone needs to study logic or a, a logically equivalent thing would be to say at least one person. So some is the same as saying at least one. Uh, so see, I, the way in which I write this might be more natural to say it for me just personally one way versus another um, but I'm keeping the same logical meaning right so some people need to study logic is a, a correct negation of the statement that no one needs to study logic number three says some lawyers use logic the negation of some is none and finally the last one I have here number four some computer scientists do not use logic uh, so the negation of some don't is all do, or every computer scientist use, uses logic, uh, even if they don't know it. Uh, and actually, it doesn't really matter whether these are true or not, but they absolutely have the opposite truth value. Either some don't, or everyone does, or all computer scientists uh, use logic. So I, I could also write, all computer scientists or every computer scientist these are logically equivalent uh, from the common understanding of what these words are uh, so you could write it either way and, and be logically correct I should go back maybe now and say some things about what are sort of common mistakes like often I'll see people when I have a statement that has all like back to number one here all dogs go to heaven sometimes people write a incorrect answer some dogs go to heaven and that isn't right. This isn't right because it's, it's possible, logically speaking, that if all dogs go to heaven were true, then technically some dogs go to heaven is technically, strictly, sp logically speaking, also true. So that both of these statements could, logically speaking, be both true. And therefore, they're not really negations. So... This is not a correct negation for all dogs go to heaven. Um, now, moving on to number two, no one needs to study logic. Now, you know, keep in mind my rules here as to how do you negate none or no one. You say some or at least one. Some people need to study logic. If you said something like maybe everyone needs to study logic or all people have to study logic, that would be wrong. It would be an incorrect answer don't say that, um, and that's and that's because, for example, it's logically possible that some people do and some people don't need to study, and therefore to say no one needs to study that would be false, and all people or everyone needs to study logic would also be false if it was actually logically the case that some people do and some people don't. So, so, um, but the correct answer, uh, some people need to study logic. Uh, is the correct answer because it is truly strictly logically speaking always the opposite truth value of no one it's like two people that just always permanently disagree either you can be of the opinion that no one needs to study or you can contradict that and say some people need to study logic um, these are contradicting each other uh, perhaps somebody walks up to you and says some people need to study logic and you want to contradict that you would say no no one needs to study logic and th so these are contradicting each other. Uh, they have the opposite truth value, whatever that truth value happens to be. Uh, each of them has the opposite truth value. They're always um, in disagreement, always contradicting each other. Some lawyers use logic. Um, it would be incorrect to say some lawyers don't use logic. Um, that might be true, but it is not the right answer for a negation. 
if we are looking for a negation, this is not the answer for number three because it's, it's possible that they're both true, right? Some lawyers use logic and some lawyers don't use logic. Logically speaking, both be true and therefore they don't form a negation of each other. They don't contradict each other. Whereas in this answer, that these two sentences do contradict whatever their truth value is, they are the opposite truth value. S either some lawyers use logic or the opposite, no lawyers use logic. Uh, finally, number four, some computer scientists do not. Uh, it would be an incorrect answer to say some s computer scientists do because again, they could both be true, uh, logically speaking. So the uh, correct answer is all computer scientists use logic or every computer scientist uh, use lo uses logic. So finally, I'll just point out that there are now connectives that we can begin to study which combine statements together to form more compound statements. For example, um, if the room is cold, then I will turn on the heat. So the room is cold is itself a statement, maybe true, maybe false, and I will turn on the heat is maybe true, is maybe false, it doesn't matter, but we can analyze the truth value of the entire compound statement that is formed with the connective if then. Uh, another example, the drink is too small and I want another one. So uh, th again, the drink is too small is a statement in and of itself. I want another one uh, where we would understand another one must refer to drinks. Um, again, we can analyze whether the whole statement might be true or might be false depending on whether each of the components are true or false. And then we have a statement here all dogs go to heaven or some lawyers use logic. We can determine uh, the truth value of the entire statement by looking at the truth value of the components. Uh, and so its, it's uh, connectives are words that can combine statements together to form uh, larger, uh, more complicated statements. And I'm starting to think maybe this is enough for one video. And so I'll go through the analysis of the connectives in another video uh, after this one. So we'll stop there. Hopefully this was a helpful, useful video.